one, the peoples of the southern Nigeria and their cultures in pre-colonial times. What do we mean by pre-colonial times? We mean before the advent of our colonial masters. So this study now will take us back of how the southern Nigeria existed before our colonial masters came. What are the learning outcomes in this study section? One, you identify the major ethnic groups in southern Nigeria. Know who the Yoruba people are, their origin, where are they from? As well as the social political organization. We we'll discuss the origin and social political organizations of the Guinea. We we'll also describe the Igbo people, their origin and their social political organizations. Go to the next slide. Now we have the major ethnic groups in southern Nigeria. They are the Yoruba, the Bini, the Igbo, the Shekiri, the Urobo, and the Ijo people. Who are the Yoruba? Where are they most people? In Nigeria, you can see that we don't find Yoruba people all over the country. But they are mostly found in some states in Nigeria. And these states are in Oyo, in Oshun, in Ogu, Ondo, Lagos, and Kogi states. They are origin. They have many versions of their origin. But in this study session, we look at only two versions, which are that of Frederick Salmon Johnson's version and that of the OK Orangement's version. In that of Frederick Samuel Johnson's version, he traces the origin of Yoruba people to the east. According to them, the Yoruba originally came from the northeastern area of Africa, that's Egypt, because of the similarities in the culture between the Yoruba and the Egyptians. And we see this culture, the, that similarity in the observances, the religious observances, the art, the type of art they do. The type of art Yoruba people do is similar with that found in Egypt. And that's where, why Reverend Johnson has traced the origin of Yoruba people to, the Egypt, to Egypt. The second one is the okay or reference version. How God sent Obadala and several game workers in the world at a time where everywhere was still covered with water. When he sent them, he gave them five pieces of iron, a lump of air tied in a white piece of cloth, and a cockroach. On the way, Obadala got drunk, and Oluluwa, who took power from him, he now led those immortals that God sent alongside with Obadala to the earth. So when they got to the earth, everywhere was still covered with water. They now placed the five pieces of iron, the lump of sand of it, and then the cochlea stepped on those things that they had placed, and the earth was formed. The next one. This is the political organization of the Yoruba. The pre-colonial Yoruba regarded Oyo as their empire, founded by Oramia, son of Odubua. Remember what I said last, that in the other version, the second version of the Yoruba people, God sent Obatala with Odubua, of Omatala with other immortals, of which Odubua was part of it. It was because Obatala got drowned that Odubua pursued power from him. Now, they now say that Oyo is regarded as the founder of Orami and some of Odudua, meaning that Odudua, when he settled on earth, had family, which now brought Orami into the picture. Hence, they regard Oyo as the capital of the Yoruba land. And Oyo had three levels of administration, namely the other thing, the Oboli Court and the Ali. The other thing was the head of the empire. I was resident in the capital, which place now, Oyo. He was assisted by priests and officials and elders. Then after the other thing, the other thing is at the top of the hierarchy. We have the Oboli Court administration. This are comprised three appropriate members of the society, as well as seven members of the Oyo Mercy. The top tier now is the army. This arm of government was headed by Are Ona Khan Kafu who was expected to live outside the city capital, outside the capital of the place, now outside Oyo. What was his duty? The duty of the army. They were to maintain stability and expand the empire, and also to check 
resident directories to keep them in place so that they don't intrude or encroach into the empire of that area. Then the Bini people. Remember, we are looking at the first three major ethnic groups in southern Nigeria. We've talked about the Yoruba. Now we are looking at the Bini. Origin of the Bini Kingdom. Just like I said during the Yoruba people, they have many versions. But here in this subtopic, we'll be looking at three versions only. The Eherera version. This version claims that the people that many people are migrants from Egypt who first settled at Ileke before finally arriving at their present location, which is Bini. And the second version is the Waket version. According to Bini mythology, Bini was the youngest side of Asanokwa, the high god. He and his brothers were sent to live in the world. God asked them to take whatever they wanted along with them to the world. So why others brought wealth? Magical powers, other materials, other things that they will need. Also, no, um, Bini decided to go with a shell on the advice of a bird. It was a bird who advised him to go with a shell. So what now? When they arrived the place, they found out that the world was still covered with water. Following the instruction from the bed, the youngest child overcome the shell, that, that snail shell that he brought when they were given the privilege of taking whatever he wanted. So he now overcome the snail shell and it now formed land. Thus, he became the first ruler because he was the only one who was able to form a land. Others brought wealth. With their wealth, there was no land. So they couldn't enjoy the wealth without land. But that who brought a snail shell, overcome it, and from that uh, shell, the water was now covered up to form a land. So, having done that, Benin now became the owner of the land. And others had to pay respect and homage to him. Then, the other version is the Ojisong version. The first period of the pre colonial uh, Benin history is known as the Ojisong era. This is because the rulers were the Ojisong. This means Kings of the sky. The next one. The social political organization of the Bini. The Bini had a unique political system which centered on the upper, who was both the civil head as well as the religious head. The society was classified into two distinct classes, namely the nobility or the adversary and the commoner, the youth. The nobility was organized into three groups of title holders, which were the Uzama, the Eyalbe, no, but don't mind my pronunciation, I'm not for this, and the Eyalbe or townships. They were equally organized, recognized ordinary people who were divided into professional fields such as the carpenters, the bread workers, the blacksmiths, the doctors, the butchers. This guild had a system of administration which was the same as. That of the village. The Ibu, being the third ethnic group among the first major ethnic groups in southern Nigeria, they are known for their segmentary or uh, asephalous way of life. What do you mean by asephalous? Most many of them hear the expression, it went when that's the origin. They never had any uh, centralized or defined. Uh, system of government. When you're going to be there, and when we look at the origins of the Igbo people, there are many versions, just like the other other ones that we have treated. But here we look at several versions. The Middle East version. Rest of people believe that the Igbo people migrated from to their present location from either the north or the Middle East. Then again, the Igbo land center version that they are the original owners of the land where they act. They did not migrate from anywhere. The irrigation, how the ancestor a rib descended from the sky. They have the upper or other version that from our moon they now dispense to other places where they are found. Then you have the Indian version where the Umuri people claim that they migrated to their present location from either, either somewhere in the state. 
you have the beginning version. This one is mostly found around Omicha people who claim that they migrated to the other side of River Niger from Benin land. They have the Israeli version. This version claims that the Igbo migrated from Israel because of the similarities in the culture of the ancient Igbo and that of the Igbo people. Now, when we look at the social political organization of the Igbo, like I said, that Igbo people are a settlers in nature. This is the settlers nature of the Igbo people did not allow them to establish a strong centralized state like that of the Igbo. However, their social political organization was fundamentally based on the age grades of age and type of society. Thus, they practice direct democracy. This direct democracy, because when I'm going to buy the Nabe in here, their family, the family lineages, every male member of that family lineage attended a general assembly of the whole village. And that general assembly is what we call the Amara Amala Oka. A place where all the male adults of the family will gather to take decisions on things bothering, uh, bothering them, their concerns, their issues, their worries. And any decision taken at that amalog remains final. 